Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Truth Will Set You Free show. I am your host, Linda Diane Watley, and we have a very special guest tonight, Eric Twiggs. Hi, Eric. Hey, how you doing? Glad to be on your show. <laughs> I want everybody to know this is a person that you would want to listen to. He is well known for his speaking abilities to talk to people in business, homes, churches, any establishment, anybody who wants to improve their communications, who want to grow. He is the person you want to get in touch with. He is also an author and he's also a family man and he is really someone that I really admire because he came and found himself and he did his own work, his own searching. And I also liked what someone else had said about him. And I wanted him to hear this because I thought it was pretty nice that somebody felt this way about him after hearing him speak, okay? And this was in business. And this was somebody that was up in the corporate ladder. He has the energy, enthusiasm, excitement any business needs today to be successful. His ability to communicate at all levels is very strong. I love his passion for people and attention to driving success through team building. And I think that's a very awesome gift to have in this day and time. And I really want you to tell people a little about yourself that you like to share just right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate your kind words. But I would <laughs> definitely want to encourage the listeners to know, or the, or the viewers, <laughs> to know that it's a process. You know, you see someone that's maybe written a book or standing on stage. They didn't start out that way. And I certainly didn't start out that way. It was a process. It was a journey. And the reason that I wasn't even able in a, be, to be in a position to write a book about overcoming procrastination is because of the challenges I've had in my life with procrastination. And it's, it's been a journey. And, and as I've discovered things, I've learned and grown from it. And that's why I've titled the book, The Discipline of Now, because it's a discipline. It's not that a person who can do those things they need to do, they're not, they don't have anything special about them. It's that they've, they apply the discipline and they get certain habits in place. And my goal is to help you to apply those same habits as well. And it wasn't by chance that you wrote this book. You had to master a lot of things in life before you became a professional at this an expert, right? Absolutely, yes, you are right. right. And, and it was a friend. I feel like your friend played a big part in that. He wanted to yes. be a Marine, and it was yes. while you was in college? Yes, it was while I was at Hampton University. So in those days, my friend Donnell, who I talk about in the book, he was interested in his purpose, and I was interested in partying. So we, <laughs> we, were, we were a little different, right? Right. So, we would have these conversations and he would talk about his plans of joining a Marine, you know, being a Marine Corps officer. And I'm thinking about the party on Friday night. And he's always telling me, hey, man, you need to get it together. Time is short. You got to get serious. And I'm like, oh man, we're young. We have plenty of time. But there was like a three week or so span where I hadn't talked to him. And I got a phone call from his mother, letting me know that he was tragically killed in a car accident. And, and that, changed everything. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about that. But it really made me think about how precious time is. And it brought me to the reality that we don't have the time that we think. It propelled you to be successful quickly. Yes. So right after that, I, I really became motivated to pursue success because I'm thinking, hey, after what happened with my friend, nothing is promised. I have to grab and, and climb that corporate ladder. I've got to make things happen. And so I started pursuing success, but I was pursuing kind of the, the world's definition of success is that the money, the position, the car. I talk about this in the book as well. I, and, and I got to a point, I arrived at this place where I had achieved success. I thought I had arrived. I had the BMW, I had this position where I was a district manager at 500 employees uh, in the automotive organization. We, had, we were winning awards for our profit performance. And then I had this moment 
I'm in the car, I'm driving my BMW, and <laughs> I look in the rear view mirror, and the eyes looking back at me were the eyes of someone that dreaded the idea of going into work every day. Wow. And I, I started saying, you know, there has to be more. Yeah. Hit this news button all the time. I'm just not passionate. And that really started me to the next level of my journey to really find meaning and purpose. And I, and I had to ask myself some questions. I had In the book, I had some help with that, where, where I really had this heart to heart with my dad that really helped to get me on the straight and narrow. I started asking myself some serious questions about what's my purpose? What, what am I passionate about? What does success mean to me? Those types of things. So that, I mean, that's really my journey in a nutshell. And then, and then, and then things, just, once I got clear, things just started happening. It, it was just so amazing. You know, I went through this period where I didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't really know what I, I know I wanted to be successful. But once I gained clarity and I started looking at my life, I started looking at the fact that I found the most passion when I was speaking to groups and speaking to audiences. And, that's, and when I started pursuing that, all the steps started revealing themselves. And I thought I was waiting on the right opportunities, but the, in reality, the right opportunities were waiting on me. Wow. And that takes you to be an expert, a professional person who can explain and break down procrastination. Because <laughs> how did you really look at that word period, though, that that was a problem? Well, it's so just my experiences. And, and, that, and that's a great question you ask. So I've had 20, over 28,000 coaching sessions. Again, with people that, you know, so, so you have people that get good results and you have people that get great results. And what I found in all my interactions is that the level of know-how is similar. They usually know a lot of the same things. But what separates those two individuals, the good from the great, is that the great has this ability to take action, whether they feel like it or not. So the great performer goes to the conference, they hear the great idea, and they immediately implement it. The good performer says, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And then you talk to them a month later and they haven't done anything with it. That's the difference. So that great performer, they move with the discipline of now. And that's my goal is to provide the reader with, that, with a resource to help you to get there to that point. Your book is very powerful. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, from the get-go, because one of the things I admired about that book that you don't hardly see authors do, the person that endorsed you, you promoted him through your book. I mean, he had books promoting him in your book. That's how much of a giving person you are. Thank you. No, I was like, I mean, wow. I, I'm, huh? I mean, I'm, great, I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Willie Jolly. Uh, and it's so funny because it tells you how things work out that when I was first thinking about get, becoming a professional speaker, the book that my father handed me was his book. And I never would have thought. I mean, this really? is years, and, and, and then all of a sudden we end up at the same National Speakers Association Club. So it just shows you that once you get clear on what you're focused on, steps start revealing themselves. But no, I, and certainly he's been a, a, a huge help to me. So, Say the name of your book again. The Discipline of Now. I, I happen to have a copy right here, too. <laughs> Don't leave off the 12 steps. <laughs> yeah, the Discipline of Now. 12 Practical Principles to Overcome Procrastination. And what do you say before you even get going? Just like we was being treated with therapy. <laughs> <laughs> you said, my name is Eric Twiggs, and I am a procrastinator. And so then you tell us to say it. I was like, that's not me. And so I couldn't even go on because you was waiting for me to say it. In the book, you was waiting for me to admit that I was a procrastinator. Well, you know, it's interesting. So... Most studies you look at, like there was a study by the University of Calgary, they, they concluded that 95% of the population 
has an issue with procrastination. Wow. And I believe that the other 5%, they haven't gotten around to finishing the survey. <laughs> but the beautiful <laughs> that's how, thing, go ahead. I was saying that, that's how big a problem that is. Yeah, you call it nation, the biggest nation. <laughs> nation. <laughs> that was fascinating when you called it a nation. <laughs> Yeah, it's a big problem. I have to agree. But the way you break down what procrastination is, though, it's not what most people think it is. You know? Right. Right. That's true. That so, a lot of, yeah. So a lot of times we attribute procrastination to laziness. And, and it's, it's so much deeper than that. Right. And, and it, there's a lot of different reasons that can cause someone to procrastinate. But most commonly, it's fear you're afraid of something, and then it's usually a pain avoidance. We, we want to avoid the anxiety. So let's say you've got a big project in your career that's, uh, yeah, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a presentation. So you feel anxiety. And, and so the, the natural response to that anxiety is to put it off. So you, you look for relief. So you say, oh, I'm going to check my social media stream on my phone. That's going to give me temporary relief right? But then as you procrastinate, when you start procrastinating and the deadline gets closer, you start feeling even more anxiety. So now you're feeling anxiety about the project or whatever's due, and you're feeling anxiety because the deadline is looming. So it, it's like a vicious cycle. That, so procrastination, it's a huge problem. It's got a lot of different roots. And that's the whole, in the book, is to, the point, one of the points of the book is to help you to understand why you procrastinate and to come up with kind of the alternatives and overcome it. And you do present a process because what I liked about what you said was it's a process, it's not an event getting to best. And that was very profound to me because people look for instant fixes and you make it very clear, like it's nothing easy about it, but you can get there. And the thing that I really liked about the way you presented your book is you become so conscious so quick. The way you wrote your book, you become conscious of your shortcomings so quick. It's like you can always sharpen something, you know, because I mean, it immediately had effect on me. I mean, my days are better. I'm serious. Good. Because I'm an organized person. I thought I was on point, but I mean, seriously, if I read your book, it's like I'm a right now person more than I was and things that I didn't think was that important, but they played a big part in processing my whole day for yes. the goals that I wanted to achieve every day. So you made me more conscious of my thinking, you know, what I'm doing, when I'm not doing anything, because it's okay to not be not doing anything based on what you already accomplished. But you right. also emphasized on balance. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Balance is, is very important. Um, so I like so I've designed the book as you as you've seen to kind of have certain sections right after we go through content it's stop read act yes and so <laughs> right and it's like you there with us like it's like I've tried to play it off like I can do that later but it's like the way you do it it's like okay okay so I put it down <laughs> it is really an excellent book. Thank you. Thank and you, you also mentioned two voices that we listened to. One of them was oppression and one of them was divine. I want you to share that too. Yes. Yeah, so basically, like whenever, especially when you're pursuing something that's really going to be good for you, you have the voices. You, you have that voice of oppre the oppressor that's trying to talk you out of it. And, and if you're not careful, you'll just listen to the oppressor. You know, so like, let's say you, you're going to start a business, you know, that voice, oh, you sure you want to start a business? Oh, you know, 80%, uh, 90% of the bit, whatever the statistic is, 90% of the small businesses fail within the first five years. Are you sure? Yeah, so those voices start talking to you and that can make it easier to, to procrastinate, but you have to listen to that, the divine voice ultimately and, and move when you, that, and that's really the key. So, so one of the things I talk about in the book is you can't confuse prudence with- I like faith. that, yes, with faith. Yeah, because there's a time and season for everything, right? Right. So just because you're moving on something. So just because someone hasn't 
launched full steam ahead with the business doesn't mean they're procrastinating. Right. They could be doing because there's a time and season to do research, to do your due diligence, to do your studying, to kind of get things in order. And and then but once you here's the thing, you're procrastinating when that thing you know you need you need to do and you're not doing it. That's what is procrastination. So when you're hearing that when you're hearing the voice that says, okay, it's time now. And you're still like, oh, well, I got to do my research. Oh, well, oh, let me, I got to clean my desk off. <laughs> that's when it becomes procrastination. I think that's a, that's a clear distinction we need to make. And another thing that's excellent about your book is very universal. Because I think children would profit from that book as well as adults that's just in everyday life. But you also have a spiritual foundation there, but you're not religious with it. I noticed yes. that, and, yes. and, and you did it so well. It kept it professional and business, but at the same time, a spirit person would appreciate that because it do affect their relationship with God. The way you process that book, it even affects your relationship with God. I saw that. But I mean, there are things that God wants us to do now. <laughs> because yeah, and another they, thing was interesting. You were concerned about people pursuing their calling. Yes. You can say purpose or you can say calling, but in the end, you was concerned that people only have a certain length of time here and you broke it down to hours. How much time do you have to fulfill your calling? Absolutely. And it's, it's very important to become clear on what that is. So many times we procrastinate and, and I think I suffer from this as well because you're, you're in something that may, it's not necessarily your calling. I mean, you may be good at it, and it may be secure, a secure source of income, but it might not be that ultimate calling that you have. And I think once you really are operating in your calling, you're so motivated. Like for me, I don't need an alarm clock to wake up. I, know. I can wake up at four o'clock in the morning without an alarm clock. Now, again, but, but during the time I talk about in the book, I needed all the help in the world to get up. <laughs> and then I tried to hit the snooze button like a like we talked about earlier, but it, it so definitely I, the finding your calling is really key and helping you avoid this procrastination. And I tell you, that ending was awesome. Thanks. Now that you have all this extra time, what are you <laughs> going to do with it? And you know what? I do have extra time. Great. And you know what, Eric? You are on the Truth Will Set You Free show, and I want you to share a truth that you want everybody to know. Well, the, main, the truth is that it's not easy. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if you're looking at me, if you're looking at a willy jolly. It's, it's a struggle on some levels to get to, to achieve your goals. It's a struggle. That's the truth. So don't and I always tell people if there's some, sometimes if there's something that, let's say you have a coach or you have someone, a mentor, and they're saying you should do something and you feel like, oh man, I feel nervous. That's a sign that that's something you need to do. Wow. <laughs> Usually that's what takes you to the next level. That thing that makes you uncomfortable, that thing that stretches your comfort zones. I just really want people to realize the truth is that to get to that next level, it's a struggle. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed yeah. to be a, a process because if it wasn't, everybody would be at the next level. Exactly. <laughs> wow. So that hopefully that's something that everybody understands. And how can people reach you if they want to reach you for speaking or your book or just observe your website or, you know, anything to contact? So, so they can um, get a copy of the book, which I just happen to have here once again. <laughs> you visit my website. It's www eric m twigs e r i c m twigs t w i g g s dot com and it's forward slash the discipline of now and you can access a copy of my book you can get the you get the paperback copy uh, directly through my site i will sign it and i will send it to you have a, i have a special bonus for the viewers today if you email me at eric e r i c at eric m twigs Dot com and say that you watch me on Linda's broadcast, I will actually send you 
a free copy of my ebook. I have another ebook. It's called One Moment in Time, Preparing for Your Defining Moment. I'll send you a free copy if you mention that you saw me on Linda's show. It's really an excellent book. And Thank thanks you. for being on our show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.